and then you can go into the town, and that's the show, and then afterwards it's the tail. Um, and in the advance, um, coming to work, we'll often have a gatekeeper who will talk to the audience and lead them into the experience. And, um, and that is crucial for, for a number of different reasons. Um, uh, what, with Small Town, the gatekeeper um, was a small town historian called Henri, um, who was a little bit French. And you had, only a little bit, yeah, on, on particular, um, about that much. Um, and um, Henri would um, have a conversation with you, which would, um, where he first of all sort of asked you a question about uh, the nature of community for you, what's the, what's the heart of community in your opinion, and then would ask you, would give, we'll give you a little bit of information kind of back in exchange for that first thing you give, so this is very much an exchange, you give something and you get something back. Um, and that's, uh, he sort of tells you a little bit more about the town, tells you some of the people that you might have been based on what you feel is a heart, heart community. And your cast is an occupation, so you might be, do you know what you were? Maybe. Maybe. Mm. Yeah, mm. Or, or butcher, no, butcher? Butcher, yeah, blood butcher. Um, uh, a little bit French to see. Um, <laughs> and, um, so it's, it's an occupation rather than um, a character. So it's like Georges blood butcher rather than Francois blood butcher. Um, it's still him inside, like underneath the hat that's going to be wearing. And um, this is the town that gossips um, a lot. And gossip kind of requires secrets. Um, so maybe Georgie has got a skeleton in his closet, as does the butcher. Maybe he is. What's, what's his secret? I think I have accepted bribe a few times not to um, let some truths come out. Because yeah. that was based on Georgie's character. That's for Georgie to, you know, he knows the book, and that's it, just for him to see his hands inside. So whatever he says, that's, then that's, that's great, and then that's taken. Not um, proud of it, but... Uh, yeah, yeah. It, would, it could be risky if that comes out, you know, take a chance. So that might then, you know, start kind of like fueling the gossip that's going in the town, so that you might get a, you might get a note saying, like, um, yeah, so that's a man with a big brown envelope going, see, going into Georgie. What's all, what's all that about? Like, and um, so that then starts, like, so, again, rumors of gossip and flying. You can gossip either by chatting, or you can gossip by writing letters yourself into the, into the, into the, into the working post office. So that is that clear enough? I'm not going to tell you. I could take, use my whole time explaining everything that because that's possible, and I won't do that. Now, the important thing, you know, that exchange happens. The important thing. Like I haven't mentioned yet this technology because although this could happen via technology, that's not what drove, drove it. It was like, this is what we want to do, this is what we want to achieve, like, and then how, you know, what's the best way to do that? And um, so for a lot of the audience, um, you might talk to one of our email, uh, very simply. Um, but we all stand, and that will kind of go backwards and forwards until you, um, you arrive at the arrive at the town on the night. Um, uh, some people wouldn't talk to, uh, wouldn't engage online because they're either mystic or they're kind of the, you know, the people's inboxes are their own sort of sources of anxiety and only them to look at. So that's, yeah, but then the, we have to design it so that people who wouldn't, haven't like, engaged, would then sort of like, be able to arrive and still be able to kind of like feel, feel that they will be part of it. We also provided different means for people to do it, like uh, bearing in mind that some of our audience might not have to email, so we offered a phone chat, a phone interview could be arranged. Um, and we did particularly sort of like with some outreach groups, that's how we group about like pensioners. Um, we brought them to the theatre and our workshop and we could kind of did the exchange and that form. So I think it's an important thing about because your audience are all different. Um, like they're all different in the technologies that they have. They're all different in the confidence with which they use those. And, um, and you have to be kind of aware of that. 
and be making decisions about what this can look in importance for you, but also sort of bearing in mind how to make it easy for your audience to do so, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And the more different ways you can sort of deliver the same experience to start where an audience is at and then bring them to you, the better. Uh, so, we, so, I mean, the piece I'm going to talk most about um, and uh, is a piece that's actually running at the moment. So I was running it this weekend, and it's happening the next two weekends, although I think it's sold out, um, uh, but it will be returning. Um, and it is called um, Adventure One, um, and um, of a bigger sort of line of investigation called Taylor Two Cities, Taylor T A I L, which is exploring our relationship to the financial system and the city. Um, and um, you'll notice as well, sorry, I'm, I'm dancing about a little bit from my notes. I mean, I'm, when, I'm, when I'm talking about technology with Kelly's work, I'm primarily talking about communications technology, means of being able to talk and play with the audience and exchange with the audience from wherever they are. Um, and um, it's interesting, there are other things that emerge from that, but that's the, kind of the primary purpose that we're using it for. Um, and um, the gatekeeper like, brings you to the experience and, um, uh, and brings you so, like, yeah, to where you need to be, both um, geographically like um, so the time and place, because this can happen anywhere, in fact, Adventure One, as I'll explain, happens not in a theatre, very much not in a theatre. Um, but also brings you imaginatively, like prepares you for what you need to know, takes you into the story, and, um, and also yeah, can genuinely get you ready. And then there's a sort of means then for us to use technology to be able to give instructions to people. Um, instructions, yeah, instructions or suggestions or directions and kind of what yeah, is different levels of those like I mean, use sort of instructions to meet all of that. Um, which will then help guide them through the experience and also hopefully be responsive to some of the choices that they make. So um, and we're using we're using a smartphone primarily for Adventure One. Um, well, it's being aware that not everybody has a smartphone. Thank you. <laughs> um, and um, currently, that was excluding you from being able to do this, which is, which is a problem, to be honest. Um, more we, I mean, we may be able to kind of work out. Probably my problem, too. Well, yeah, but I, I think it, but I think ultimately the responsibility is, the primary responsibility is going to go back to the maker. Like, and, and then, you know, at least we would be super clear with you about that before you start, before you start getting excited and invested that this is something that requires this. Um, and, um, uh, yeah, but smartphones are, have become a lot more prevalent, and um, so I feel a bit more easy about using them. Normally, my rule of thumb is, if you're going to get your use technology, imagine your mother. <laughs> Can your mother use it? Um, without any explanation. Um, if she can, but if she's something in her, in her daily life, brilliant, like, then you can be fairly confident about giving that to an audience uh, without instruction. If she can't, then you need to teach your own how to use it, like, as part of the experience. Um, which is what happens with Adventure 1 as well. So Adventure 1, um, I'll sort of talk you through um, what you know of and kind of the route that it kind of happens. So you might go onto Kelly's website and excuse me one second. Um, so there isn't much. Um, it tells you it's a bit of tags. <coughs> Um, you're retaining someone who works in the heart of the financial system. <coughs> Your needs are blend into the city around you so you don't draw attention. We don't have permission to be doing this. We don't have permission to be here. What happens next? Well, that's up to you. 
um, and it continues with the kind of stuff I've just kind of said, and then it also gets practical. Um, you'll need to exchange emails with an associate a few days in advance of the adventure on a day with the smartphone, earphones, and your wits about you. And back in the back of we can't tell you anymore we here. But it sends an email, um, and the language will so you can notify you. So you send an email, <coughs> so you to be intrigued. Um, and um, you're then going to give the link to uh, the booking, um, an event right. And then once you've booked your tickets, um, then Coney is in touch with you, basically to say, you yeah, know, thank you, um, and uh, they confirm confirmed for this time, and um, uh, handing you over to Josh now, who's our associate, um, who's going to lead you uh, from here. And then um, a little while later, and you've also been you've also been primed that you need to say so the adventure happens at the weekend on Saturday or Sunday. Um, you need to be ready from the Monday previous to be able to um, uh, exchange a series of messages with Josh. And then it's really important that if you don't if you don't do that, you cannot continue. Like we will be funding you money. Um, but that's going to be important. I think there's something there. To think about, like, again, forget about technology as being a device. Looking about technology in terms of like people's attention and how people interact with it, like, and and being really clear about like what you're kind of expecting of people if you require them to be able to get through sort of stuff. So we've been really clear about the fact that this is that for, for up to five days in advance, you need to be taking part in this stuff. And people will forget and will. Oh, uh, yeah, Josh reports that, yeah, probably like at least a third of the audience like trying to do everything in the last day um, because they're going to keep putting it off. And whereas, yeah, a third of the audience will do everything as quickly as possible. Um, and you need to be ready for all these different you know, kind of ways. So, Josh drops you a line. Um, which uh, goes um, something like this. Hello, Georgie. I'm ready to lead you into the adventure. You're confirmed for your time, starting at a secret location in the city of London, EC4. We need to stop a few messages in good time by Friday so that you can learn everything you need to play and have uploaded a playlist to your smartphone. And only then can I tell you the start location, exclamation mark. Your adventure will begin with the surveillance of someone who works in the heart of the markets. It would be very useful to know where you're coming from. So, in a nutshell, how would you describe the financial system and the people inside it? There's no right or wrong answer, it doesn't need to be polished. Just please describe whatever the first brings to mind and then press send. Smiley face. Yours, Josh. And then there's a PS, the adventure works best for anyone who's confident using a smartphone to listen to music without going to it. If you're not one of those, no worries, just let me know and we'll take care to help you through it. So, Sure. I, I got that yesterday. What, what's your answer? Uh, yeah, um, I'm confident. Um, that's fine. I think. And I, 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 yeah, I saved. I saved his name. His name into my contact list. Hang on, no, I oh, start. sorry. Do you remember what your answer was? And what's the question again? Uh, if I'm confident or not? No, no, no about, about the financial system. Oh, the name. The, yeah, I remember. I emailed it back saying single-mindedly. Focused uh, on making no, on on moving on to the next step, something like that. Yeah. So Josh responds to Georgie. So hi Georgie, that's an interesting response. Thank you. But I wonder if you know, single-mindedness like still needs to go daydream. Mm -hmm. uh, I can tell you that the adventure is not only surveillance; you can be tailing someone who works in the heart of the city. Now here's something practical. Trying to get to what you can do at the moment. But so there's a thing here, what, we, what this is trying to uh, conjure, which is a good word, for Georgian um, our audience, is that he is really talking to someone, like to someone called Josh. And each of these exchanges, although um, largely scripted, um, are still always going to be a little bit responsive, at least, to what he's written. Um, will always include his name and will always find some something, picking out something from what he said in that answer, 
and then if you like, you're just kind of like passing that back. And that's the <coughs> software system, like, that is that is doing that. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, so it's, 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 it's a wetware system. It's a. It's a wetware system. Wetware. Yeah, wetware. That's a second joke. Um, it's people. <laughs> oh, oh, it is a person. That was, that's my debate about how we do know whether it's human. Yeah, but I think I think I think you can so you, a lot of the time, like maybe eight percent of the time, people people will say predictable things enough yes. to go. You can pro I mean, we, we work with small time, We worked with something which helped insert information, but it can only do that in a really basic way. Like you know, this is insert first name. That's easy. Like it's something which can pluck, you know, in Georgie's read something that would be impossible, about the fantasy would be impossible for um, an AI or an AI that we could afford to use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like it would be impossible to go over to like um, uh, to give a response that would, that would be meaningful. Yeah, because um, when I, I, I grammatically it was long and single minded Lee. Mm -hmm. And it would respond back, readjusting, not only selecting, but readjusting. So yeah. I assumed there was a person making that. Sense. It's Josh. Yeah. yeah. But, but that was my assumption. Because I'm always, as a maker, I'm also looking for the gaps and looking. Yeah. And as, as someone who is audience yesterday, I just assumed, yeah, someone is actually doing this. <clears throat> but there's a process of developing these as well where you start out like with a person writing everything. And then you start to learn the best responses, and you start to program in the responses that are most useful. Um, and then you, but you still have to. I don't believe that you can you can switch on to autopilot without losing ultimately for a significant portion of the audience, um, like a real a real sense of bias. It's really important. Like I mean, yeah, it maybe it's not important. Like sometimes it's fine. And that's just, just going to be automated. But then you want to make sure that, you, that the, if the audience think that they're talking to an automated um, response, then that's fine, it's no problem. Like, but this, but you know, for the purpose of the piece, it's really important that you are talking to a person, something called Josh. Because hide and seek, and hide and seek do their own days of life, their own life, dreams of a life. Um, it was an online experience, and you were talking to the, uh, the machine, you know, the automated system, but it was one of the most poetic experiences I've ever had. It was not a live person. It was, so you can script things that are incredibly eloquent. Absolutely, but, 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 uh, but that's not the question of why I'd like to go to the impact. It can have quite an impact on the people that will resonate. Mm. Like, um, it's not as responsive. But, but it's, but it's, yeah, but even that, I mean, that's just a bit, it's kind, of, it's kind of a way like, do you want them to think that it's a person, or do you want them to think that that doesn't matter, then that's fine. So, the next thing, the practical thing around, so I want to, um, is to, yeah, so, yeah, so, um, is then to text back to a number. Sentence which uh, starts with, and I'll ask you to do this now if you like, don't need to, but it'll cost you what uh, sending a, a text message would normally cost you. If you text to that number, the phrase hello Josh, if you like, no worries if you are not, you can do that now. And, um, and you're told this is. Because you'll be using your phone to receive instructions, so I need to show you how to use your phone to do this. Oh. 
Größe, also Transportmengen, Hochfunkmengen. Tension that you have like when you're texting versus what it is to have a voice speaking in your ear, like it's very, very different. And like there's much more readers in the voice that sort of can then help you heighten that. Um, and it was just, 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 it was really, just really, it's really lovely to see how all of you are using the sort of kind of, the kind of what it is to be the physical actor with the, with the tech, with the, with the tech device, like in some way, uh, in the same form. So I think it's a really important thing to be, to be thinking about. Um, when you, what happens next in the adventure is that, uh, or in the, the exchange that then sent, a, uh, a playlist of tracks to upload with a first track. Um, uh, then the tracks were always numbered. And you have to listen to the first track, um, which I need to play to you so fast. Um, says uh, if you can start the version then play track two um, and, um, and then that's going to run on for a little bit. That is teaching you how to play like uh, very importantly. You have to play in a way, because you don't have permission to do that, you have to play in a way which means that you blend in to what's around you so that nobody who's not playing can tell what you're doing. And, um, and this is where again the phone is incredibly useful because if you want somebody to be able to inconspicuously not draw attention to himself whilst they're like standing like in the middle of like kind of like public space. Um, if you're if I'm just doing that, like you're gonna walk past me and think, what the fuck? <laughs> if I'm doing this and I'm looking at this, then you'll not be paying the second version. If I'm if I'm acting and doing this, but I'm actually paying attention to something else, then that's sort of like what you're kind of being taught to do. So the, the phones are prop in that in that way. It allows you to temporarily suspend the normal rules of being in the space, um, and that's what we're trying to do. And then what? Some spoiler for the least Georgie who is going on, but so that then you'll be kind of given a map um, with um, places to go. Mr. X, who you're tailing, um, is going to be turning up soon. Before that. Be useful for you to listen to records and pass the to them. So, so the basic mechanic is you go to a place. Um, so you might find yourself in a branch of Starbucks, for instance, you lied. Um, and in that, when you know that when you're there, you text a particular keyword, and then that texts you back and says, "If you're in Starbucks, then play this track." And then you'll hear something about Mr. X that happened in that branch of Starbucks, whilst you're still blending in. Um, and um, Again, spoiler, um, <clears throat> some of the choices that you've made, including some of the choices that you've made right before you get there, will have an impact and influence on what your experience is going to be. And, um, yeah, sure, it's all right now. I was just thinking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then the motorbike. Oh, no, no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so. Um, oh, that point, that point. That point. Yeah. Um, so that and it's quite it's, it's quite it's quite sort of a, a we have to take huge care to get people. I mean, a they need we need to the part of the most reasonable advances so that we can check that their phones work with it. Some don't. <coughs> Probably about ten percent don't for some unknown reasons we're still can fathom. 
and, um, and then Josh becomes a little bit of a help desk to kind of like just kind of try to work out and try to kind of get, yeah, there's other ways that we're learning about how to kind of get through it. Um, but that's and another. What are those problems to do with? Um, to do with uh, technology being like magic. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. This but is it's a, like phone network or signal okay. or. This is another. This, this is all of it. Could be any of those things, yeah. and that's one of the problems about challenges in using technology. I've always found is that there's a kind of an opacity. Like when it doesn't work, why is that? You can't see. It's not because all the workings are not transparent to us. And so, uh, particularly if you are audience, you know, as artists, we, we, you know, we, if, you know, when, when the projector wasn't working, we're invested in, like, let's try and make it work. We've got a contract of, like, engaging with it on a basis of, we, we, we know we really want to make this work. As audience, your contract is very different. I mean, kind of, kind of contract in the sort of sense of, like, what, how invested, like, what am I invested in this? It's like, oh, it's, it's not working, well. it must be, and then you, you've lost them. So, there's something very challenging, I think, about because the audience doesn't have the same investment and because they can't see, you know, because we can't work out what's going on, like it's really difficult to fix it. And we've got to, yeah, so probably about 80% of Josh's time is spent dealing with 10% who are having problems in some way. Um, and sometimes it might be, you know, just because they type the wrong keyword, like, type the wrong keyword. Because the tech that we're using is basically responsive to you send a particular word that that would trigger a particular response, which can be anything. Um, so, is so, that so all clear enough? Um, I think what I really want to kind of sort of focus on is, and with the kind of, so this one about to sort of kind of sort of propose to you as an exercise is something I've never done before. Um, you know, that's it, my age is crashing and burning completely. Um, but it's partly about trying to see beyond the technology to the technology and just trying to see it in terms of like what it does with people. And I think that, you know, sort of digital, for me, the most exciting about digital um, is, well actually partly is about what you can make with it, in fact, the phone is brilliant as a devising tool, like as a making tool. Like films, voice recordings, etc. Um, and you know, the tech that's around is an interesting way to like, sort of kind of you know sort of capturing experience and then like playing that back to an audience in some way. But for me, you know, the really exciting stuff for Kami's stuff is about you know, communications technology. And the big advance isn't really about digital, I think it's more about mobile, and it's about being able what it is to be able to speak to an audience in any time, any place, and then be able to kind of bring them to any time, any place as well. Like